to make the best of a confusing and hopeless situation, but boy, this place is quite the enigma, wouldn't you say? I would. And you know, a little warning would have been nice, you know, before they threw us headfirst into this gladiatorial prisony place with its perilous medley of twisted stage productions that shred the silky fabric which weaves together the fragile blanket of sanity that keeps us sane. But you know, whatever. Either way, it's safe to say we're in quite a pickle jar here. We gotta rescue our friends and get back to Mr. Boat. I mean, they do the same for you, and adventuring just wouldn't be the same without, I don't know, this guy. Best chef in all the land. Food so stupid delicious, one taste would blow your face through the back of your head. Like bang, splat! And who could forget this quirky fellow? You know, he owns a bat farm back home, and his lifelong dream is to breed a terrifying race of super bats. None of which makes any sense, of course, because he's absolutely terrified of bats. And this lovely lass always tells the best bedtime stories, hands down. Plus, she always smells like chocolate, so that's good. And then there's this guy, and this handsome fellow, and that thing. All your best friends imprisoned, and they don't like it very much because it's bad and horrible. And then there's Hattie, the best friend of all. Why did he stab us in the back and twist the blade? I mean, just this morning, he gave everybody flowers and presents, and now he goes out of his way to hurt our feelings? Oh, I think not. You can't fool me. Hattie would never betray us. B betray us. Never! Something fishy's going on here, and I think I don't like it right now at all. It must have something to do with that scary, albeit fashionable hat. Sure looks evil. I mean, it's glowing red and stuff. Glowy red stuff is always bad. Everybody knows that. So what dangerous treats lie in store as we continue to unravel this treacherous sweater? I don't know, but use caution as you continue your gallant endeavor. Don't, don't like, fail and die and stuff, because it's all up to you now. What? Why did, why did do that? I was... It so far. You don't even complain about the prison food, which is shocking because that stuff tastes like doo doo casserole with a side of butt salad. But best of all, your riveting performances have the theater bursting at the seams with excited patrons. And with all this extra cash you're raking in, the theater can afford some serious improvements and really start beefing up these horrifying shows of murdery death to appease the fickle crowd. So, so, so that's. Good. And what's the deal with Hattie? He just creepily looms around the theater all day. Look at him looming. It seems like he's been forcefully forced to manage this place. Well, it looks that way. He just sort of sits there. Just as productive as one can be. Yep, living life to the fullest. Whoa, slow down, buddy. Yes, sir, full of salt and pep. Full of pee and vinegar. Overflowing with youthful energy. Say something, Hattie. Cat got your tongue? Shut up. You know, people really seem to be a precious and rare commodity in this strange part of the world. Seems our little boat wreck was a delicious gift from the heaven gods, and these bizarre cats are taking full advantage of us. What cruel fate left them to roam the grounds of this scary old theater, desperately ruling these bleak premises with an iron f paw? And just how long have they been orchestrating this sinister scheme? I mean, avert your eyes, children. Avert them! There's bony people skeletons everywhere. Scary, right? Now, I'm no genius, but I definitely know how long it takes for a body to decompose. So this must have been going on for at least... Oh, wait, scratch that... Thing I said. <clears throat> so do you possess the courage to soldier onward and uncover the mysterious mystery behind this grim world? Or will your hilarious death screams be drowned out by the sound of your own hilarious death screams? We shall see. We shall see. We shall see. Yes. From your delicate hands now, there's never a dull moment with you at the helm, except for maybe like twice, but I gotta hand it to you. You've got quite the unbreakable spirit. I mean, I'm not nearly as brave as you. If I was in your capably nimble shoes, I'd say to heck with Hattie and my friends. They'll be fine. And then I'd pack myself a nice bag lunch, show these cats my favorite finger, and then I'd make like horse turds and hit the trail. But I'm not you, and you're not horse turds. No, sirs. You are the very definition of the cat's PJs. And speaking of which, these cats are truly bizarre. Why are they here? I mean, I've got my theories. Perhaps they're aliens from another world. Maybe their genetic experiments gone awry. Or could it be that they were once normal kitties? Normal kitties who evolved into the strange, unpleasant creatures we see before us? These hideously adorable abominations with their beady eyeballs, giant bloodthirsty tiny mouth fangs, slashy paw claws, and stanky funk breath. 
Plus, they're awfully rude and crabby. I think they all need girlfriends or something. I'm a cat, see? I'm grouchy, see? I like to run around all day and hurt people's feelings, see? But don't take them lightly. Although sassy and lazy by nature, cats are awfully crafty, and finding a weak spot in that bright orange furry armor might prove difficulty. M uh, minus the why. They're always watching, children. I see them lurking in the shadows. Lurking hard! Or hardly lurking, see? On that note, this whole theater's like a bad joke. But how did things get so bad? At one time, this theater was a nice place, with flowers in every vase and smiles on everyone's mouth, faces. Can you believe it? I wouldn't believe it. I mean, if you told me that, I'd more than likely call you a liar and walk away. And, um, find some place to get ice cream to replenish the innocence you blackened with your filthy deceits. I like strawberry. Just keep your wits about you as you descend deeper into the belly of the beast. And perhaps you'll find a way to put an end to this- Take my dainty hand as I whisk you back to a time long forgotten. Long before the sh- the, the poop hit the fan. Here. The year was 17 59 ish, whatever. Self-made billionaire, cat fanatic, and theatrics aficionado Perham Furbottom set out to create the biggest, ritziest, most thrill-inducing his theater ever. And he did. And it was the talk of the town. Trust me, if you weren't there, you were most assuredly square. People were seriously like, what, you weren't there? What are you, a nerd? Opening night was a thing to behold, as Lord Furbottom organized the grandest, jaw-dropping show ever seen. There was explosions and dancing girls, dancing girls who exploded, oh. exotic animals, exotic animals who exploded, incredible feats of magic and wonder with fantastic production values all around. Furbottom sat for days on end, marveling at his breathtaking creation and packing handfuls of delicious, buttery popcorn into his mouth. But alas, his illogical contempt for intermissions ultimately caused his demise. And during the show, Furbottom passed away, having pooped himself to death on the way to the bathroom. Legend says he clenched his butt as hard as he could, but his little cheeks just gave out. Furbottom left nothing behind but his beloved theater, his precious kitties, his hat, and of course his bloated corpse, which was lovingly drifted out to sea and immediately ravaged by sharks. And that, children, is the legend of Perham Furbottom, a respectable and apparently delicious a gentleman. But the show must go on, right? Right! For thousands of years, Perham's hat passed from head to head, leader to leader, and the theater still operates to this very day. And what a piece of crap it's become! I bet Perham is rolling over in his sharks right now now. I mean, everything's poorly run and the whole place stinks like pee and feet. And with everyone involved walking a fine line between moodiness and full-blown insanity, it's only a matter of time before something truly horrifying happens. But try to keep a sunny disposition as you sink further into darkness, yeah? Nobody likes a crybaby.